Today we're gonna make a tropical rum trifle. It is layers of a coconut mousse, mangoes, kiwi, and pineapple, all layered with co toasted coconut, pecans, and a soaked rum cake. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new and delicious recipe. The first step is to make our coconut pastry cream. You're like, what are we doing? Yes, I promise, this is the only thing that you have to like think about or do. I'm not even gonna make you cut anything. I know, who am I even? So, uh, we are gonna take coconut milk. Make sure you shake her up before you pour her out. Um, just saying, like a cocktail. So I've got my coconut milk. I've got my sugar right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that in my pot. I'm gonna take a little pinch of salt, just a small pinch. Nothing excessive. Ooh, mini salt bay. Give it a whisk. And we're just whisking this together just for, for fun almost. Okay? Now, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and we're gonna bring this to a boil. Step two, which I'm gonna do over here so that you can see me, is I've got in my bowl, I have one egg and one egg yolk. And I'm gonna go ahead and whisk those together just briefly. This is pastry cream. We also have cornstarch. Whisk those together carefully so as not to cornstarch yourself. Now this is a little trick so that you get that perfectly smooth pastry cream, otherwise sometimes the cornstarch definitely has a tendency to cool. Um, and we don't want to give it that chance. So by putting it, whisking it in with the eggs, you're kind of eliminating that its chance to, to mess up your beautiful pastry cream. And now we wait. The only other thing that you would like to be aware of is that you have your favorite whisk to whisk this together and that you have a sheet pan that I have lined with plastic wrap or a baking dish, whatever. You just want to make sure that you have somewhere to put your pastry cream after you are done whisking it to lay it out and get it to cool quickly because I'm not about waiting. Mm -mm. We want this trifle today. There she is. I see her. All the bubbles. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to move this here so that you can see me and I'm going to go ahead and kind of temper this in. So just slowly whisking and adding a little bit at a time, bringing the egg temperature up to the boiling milk temperature. That's what we're doing and that's what I mean by tempering. This way the eggs don't curdle and everyone is happy. We take said mixture, we pour it back into our pot. We set this to the side and then we carry on whisking. Don't be alarmed, that is on the outside of my pot. So go ahead and get your stove top back on and we're gonna whisk. It's on about medium high and I am just, I am just whisking. I am waiting for it to come to a boil and then we're gonna whisk it for a minute. So you wanna activate the cornstarch by bringing it to a boil and then you wanna get out rid of all of that cornstarch taste by continuing it to boil it for a minute. If you see a few lumps in there, it's okay. It's a small batch, and so it is also very, very hard to make a lump-free pastry cream in this size batch. Oh my gosh, it's only been 20 seconds, guys. What? You can't be serious. It feels like three hours. Everything's fine. Three, two, one, off. Whew. Okay, now we're gonna take this, we're gonna drop it on our pan. Um, I'm using my whisk because I want to get it out of there quickly. I don't want any chance for it to burn. But you see how silky smooth that looks? Oh man, feeling good. That's it. Wipe the sweat from your brow. You've done it. The hardest part of the trifle is over. Um, I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap, poke a couple holes and pop it in my fridge. Um, if you're super impatient and wanna keep a timer on it, you can put it in the freezer for about like 15 minutes, but don't freeze your pastry cream. So our pastry cream is cooling and we are going to kind of prep the rest of the ingredients for the trifle. Seems like a lot, 
it's not really that hard. It's just some things, right? So first thing we've got is our cake. You're like, whoa, what is that? This is my rum cake, which I made uh, about a month ago. And I have been wrapped, has wrapped and in my freezer until this very moment, which I am so excited I can't even talk. But um, in this case, cake is delightful. There's no video, but I will link in the description below. Or you can use any sort of tropical flavored cake, a coconut cake, or even a lemon cake would be lovely, orange, um, whatever cake, or even plain vanilla would be love. All right, our coconut is out. Um, it took a year and a day because I was toasting it at 325. You don't have to do that. You could do it at 350, 375 if you wanna watch it. Uh, but you've got a nice golden brown around the outside. I've got some lighter colors here to really bring that flair. Uh, and I'm pretty stoked about it. So we're just gonna let this cool. Now I'm just gonna cut this cake um, into nice bite-sized cubes, right? It's still delightful. Just checking. The easiest way to do that with a bunt cake is to kind of take the kind of sides like that and cut you know, tranches, if you will. And then, and then we're gonna cut little cubes. And that's really all there is to it. As long as they're nice, like it's not gonna be unpleasant to eat, then that's the perfect size. I just had a moment of panic where I was like, my coconut. And then I was like, she right there, it's fine. Okay, so. We have done our cake, and we are going to do a little, just a little soak. So I'm going to put a little simple syrup, which is just uh, equal parts water and sugar brought to a boil and cooled. Um, it's gonna put a little bit of that in my bowl. You just want enough to soak your cake. And then we are going to use some rum. You could use light rum if you'd like. You could use dark rum. You could omit it. Is that a lot of rum? Yeah. It's tropical. We're leaning into it. Um, and then what I've got here in my bowl is I have mangoes that were previously frozen and thawed and pineapple that were previously frozen and thawed. Could you cut your own? Totes. This is an easy trifle and I am not about to be cutting all these mangoes. But what I am going to do is take any excess juice. Hey! He wanted to take a rum bath. Let's fish him out, shall we? It's not your turn, sir. We're gonna take all the pineapple liquids and put that into our simple situation over here. No, nope, not you. You don't get to go. Yep, mix that up. And we're gonna pour that on our cake. Maybe pour a little and then toss the cake. It's a lot of cake. Okay. Go ahead and give it another nice little bath. Bootyful. It's fine. Go ahead and get this. Okay. Okay. All right. We have some soaked cake. We have our pineapple and our mango. And all that's left is the kiwi. I'm wear gloves because I'm allergic to kiwi, but you don't have to wear gloves. Okay, so the way to cut kiwi is to cut it in half. Oh, look at her, she's so cute. Cut it in half, right? And I'm gonna save her. And then you're gonna take a spoon. You're gonna slide it between the flesh and the skin. I'm like what did I just say? And then you're gonna pop it out. Boom, uno. You could also peel it in another way, but I find all other ways to be slow and cumbersome. If yours is a little less than ripe and it doesn't want to come off the end, then just kind of slice the end off. Kiwi has been de-skinned. Now we are ready to slice it. You can do it however you want. I'm gonna make little, um, make little like triangles because I think they're pretty. Just cut like nice big sections. Go ahead and cut those into little 
Starburst, if you will. Okay, Kiwi, you need to. All right, I mean, honestly, we're ready to whip our cream and get, get assembled. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our cream whipping. Um, just get that in the bowl of a stand mixer. Whisk attachment in, on. I'm gonna go ahead and beat this on kind of medium. It's gonna take a little longer, but it's going to be a little uh, more stable and it's gonna have a nicer texture. to stiff peaks here. Um, beautiful. You done. All right, so we can set our whisk aside. We're gonna use the same bowl and stand mixer to beat or refresh our pastry cream because uh, it's, you know, set in from the fridge and we want it to be smooth and pliable before we fold in our heavy cream. Okay, our pastry cream. So the good thing about the way that we cooled it, it's easy to get it into our bowl off of the plastic wrap. Do you see how lovely this is? Yes, she's gorgeous. Boop. Ah. Okay, go ahead and fit your bowl in there because I just kind of shoved it over there. If there's a little bit of um, heavy cream left in your bowl, that's okay. That's why we're doing it in this order. Paddle attachment. And then we're just going to beat her until she's smooth. Now, if you had lumps in your pastry cream when you made it, this is not gonna get those lumps out, sadly. This is going to just kind of create what was a smooth pastry cream, turn it back into a smooth pastry cream. So, be aware. We are going to fold together our heavy cream and our hello, hello, okay, and our pastry cream into one luscious coconutty thing. We are going to, at first we're going to do what's called sacrifice. You've heard me talk about it before, where you sacrifice some of the leavening of your uh, heavy cream to get the pastry cream to be a nice consistency. So this is how you make creme legere. So I'm going to take a bit of my whipped cream, and I'm going to aggressively fold that. I mean, this is like barely folding. It's more like really beating it in. I'm gonna beat or aggressively fold my whipped cream into my pastry cream to get it a little lighter. If you want to bump up the coconut flavor and you have it, you can also add a little extract, a coconut extract to this. You can also fold some of your toasted coconut into this pastry, this creme legere. Um, you could also fold untoasted coconut into your creme legere. So many options here for you. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a nice fold. If you wanted to sweeten your uh, whipped cream before you added it to your pastry cream, you can 100% do that, just add a little confectioner sugar. This is really, you know, it's so easy to adapt to your own personal feelings and desires of the moment. So here we have it. We've got our creme legere, our coconut creme legere. We've got our fruits and our toasted coconut and our cake that has been soaked in some rum. And we're ready. We are ready to assemble. I know. Yeah. Shall we start with whipped cream? I think we shall. Now, Get yourself a nice cream base. And then we're going to cover that with some cake. I'm gonna be cool and I'm going to not be persnickety. Watch me trifle, man. Cool. And then we are going to adorn with fruit. So you've got your mangoes. I'm not gonna stress about the juices that are in here because they're going to mix and mingle 
with the cake as well, which is another reason you don't want to necessarily over soak your cake because you want to make sure that you've got enough, you don't want like a mushy uh, trifle. Like no, no mushy trifles. Okay, a little bit of kiwi. really nicely. Okay, coconut. This is your texture. I mean, the longer it sits, it's going to get a little looser, but it's your texture. It's your toasty flavor. It's, you know, it's a lot of things to us right now. So we're going to go ahead and dollop on some of our cream and we are going to press it down. I find a spoon works easier for this. Um, so go ahead and get that all beautiful. Now this is a small trifle dish. If you have a larger one, then you're you know, you're know, gonna be closer to a full, this was a 12 cup bundt cake. So that's like a large cake. If you have like a, a full dish, you might be closer to using all of your cake than I am here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our next layer of fruit. Obviously I'm running out of space here. Um, and I'm, but I'm gonna put some more fruit on top, so you're not. Next layer of fruit, in she goes. I'm just gonna like push this down a little bit. I mean, I'm like trying to make it to the top of my thing, but obviously I'm a little over, but it's all about that, that ratio of ingredients, all the layers. If you wanted to do a little bit of plain whipped cream on top, you could absolutely do that. All right, now we are gonna do our last layer, our last bit of fruit. I'm actually gonna start with the pineapple. Um, now I am going to be a little bit more careful about how much juice I get in here because you don't want the juice to break the cream that's on top um, and just be like unattractive. So this is the layer that matters. I didn't have to cube these mangoes. She is so pretty. Show stopping even. Yes. Take your tropical dessert to the next level here. Oh, I'm wondering what I, you know, I have thoughts and I wish I had thought about them before, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna push these in a little bit because I'm gonna put my coconut around the outside. So I'm gonna like tighten this little collar here, if you will. So I'm just gonna like kind of toasted coconut my way around here. Okay. One more little bit here. Okay. All right. Last but not more, well, almost last but not least, we are going to kiwi. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, sometimes you're just like, dang, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Those times. That's <laughs> oh, fine. Um, and then I'm gonna put a few toasted pecans on top, just because there's pecans inside, and I wanna make sure that that is visually apparent. Um, you know, partially for allergies, but also just for, you know, good old fashioned good looks. She's like, you overloaded me with fruit, and I am spinning. I'm like, I hear you, but I don't care. All right. And now we've done it. We have made a gorgeous, show-stopping tropical trifle. And we're ready to let it sit for a day. I <laughs> know, what a bummer, right? It allows all the flavors to meld and blend and like become one. Um, honestly though, if I were going to, I would do the coconut on the outside right before I serve it, just so that you're not, that you'll have like a little bit of crunch factor on there. But um, otherwise, just cover her up pop her in the fridge and let her sit uh, and the flavors meld to perfection. It's time to try. Imagine that. Uh, I actually did not let it sit overnight, but you should because it's gonna be better. Um, but I'm gonna dig in right now. I just gotta make sure I get all those layers. Oh my gosh, and as much coconut as possible on the counter. Yes, that's definitely the downside to placing it where I did. 
Make sure you get all the way down there. Yes. All right. Little cake, little fruit, no kiwi. Here we go. Mmm. Yum. Oh. There's like a little pop of the rum, like smooth, juicy fruit. That coconut pops through. You got a little crunchiness from the topping. It's just, oh, it's such a wonderful tropical flavor all in one bite.